Life Audio. Hello. Thank you for listening to Your Daily Bible Verse, the podcast that examines one verse each day to learn more about God and His will for us. I'm your host, Jennifer Slattery, and after this short word from our sponsor, we'll dive into today's Bible verse, 1 Timothy 4.12. Today's Bible verse is 1 Timothy 4.12. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. When do you most tend to feel disqualified? When working with team members more educated than you? When connecting with friends with more money, fancier cars, or better fitness levels? Have you ever led a Bible study or small group filled with people who knew more scripture or seemed more spiritually mature than you? This is a topic I've been asked to speak on more frequently lately, and I've discovered a good number of those in my audience, maybe even all of them, struggle at some point with feeling unqualified or disqualified, and often for the very roles they are holding or the roles that they sense God might be asking them to step into. And I get it. I have experienced the insecurity that can come in any of those situations, and I currently lead a team of women, many of whom are more gifted, more educated, and more experienced in some way than I am. Only, I don't feel inferior or insecure because I have learned to place my confidence in Jesus Christ. I realize I am leading my team because this is the role God assigned me for His purposes and His pleasure. I also realize no one, regardless of how they view me, regardless of how they react to me, regardless of how they might try to disqualify me, can remove me from my role unless or until God allows. Paul, the first century church planter who wrote the letter from which today's verse comes, understood this, and he wanted Timothy, his mentee, to understand this as well. At the time, Timothy was leading a church experiencing significant challenges. During a time of Christian persecution, when living out one's calling already would have taken great courage and determination, influential false teachers were creating major problems within God's church. According to 1 Timothy 4, verse 3, Paul had urged Timothy to do two things. First, to stay, to resist the strong pull to run. And Paul also urged him to rebuke or to call out the false teachers, who may have been older, more experienced, and maybe even more popular. And Timothy had to do both of those things alone without the help of his beloved spiritual father and mentor. Now, pause to consider how you might have responded if in Timothy's situation. Would you have wanted to quit? Would you have stayed but emotionally disengaged? Would you have grown bitter and become combative? Would you have become defensive feeling like you had to fight for your role. Those are all normal human reactions to those types of environments, but Timothy was not to act like the lying hypocritical heretics with sin-hardened hearts. He was a called and empowered representative of Jesus Christ. Therefore, as today's verse states, he needed to do two things. First, he was not to let others look down on him due to his age. Now, Timothy couldn't control other people's opinions, perspectives, and behaviors any more than we can. We will all encounter people who seem to dislike or try to discredit us, not because of anything we've done or said, but because of the sin and insecurity within them. However, we are to strive not to give people cause. Instead, by God's transforming grace— Our actions and reactions should demonstrate to everyone what a life fully devoted to Jesus Christ looks like. We do this in our conduct, and that was what Timothy was supposed to do as well, in how he carried himself, how he responded to others, including those who attacked him and treated him poorly. And he was also to set an example in what he said. We often equate spiritual maturity with how well we follow certain rules, how much biblical doctrine we might know, or how many verses we can recite. 
But according to Jesus' half-brother James, our tongues, the words we speak, reveal the true depth of our spiritual maturity. And as Jesus said in Matthew 15, our words reveal the condition of our hearts. And a heart that is first and foremost filled with the love of Jesus Christ naturally pours that love onto everyone we encounter. Jesus told us in John 13, verse 35, that this would be our most defining characteristic. He said, quote, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another, because we cannot love like Jesus without the strength and the power of Jesus, without living loved by Jesus. And if Timothy did that, if he remained connected to Jesus Christ, receiving his love in the depths of his soul, this would enable him to remain others focused, saying those things that benefited others according to their needs, as scripture commands in Ephesians chapter four, knowing that God had him, would protect him, would empower and vindicate him, and would use him to encourage and nurture those he led. In other words, to recognize he was coming from a place of victory. The more Timothy realized and trusted in those biblical promises, the greater his ability to lead, to teach, and to love others well. Which leads us to the second internal soul characteristic Paul wanted Timothy to model, and that's faith. A faith built on the unchanging character of God and the unshakable truths he preserved for me and you in Scripture. A faith that would prove vital during the frightening times in which Timothy and the other Christ followers lived. His faith, when demonstrated through quiet confidence, through gentle boldness, would help others to grow in faith as well. And finally, living in a sinful and corrupt city, where it would have been so easy to become dishonest and corrupt, to downplay certain sins, or to allow the hypocritical leaders infiltrating his church to bring out the worst within him, Timothy was to maintain a pure heart. Because as Proverbs 4 verse 23 so clearly states, it is from the heart that everything, our attitude, our words, our conduct flow. I long to live as a role model for Jesus Christ. And I suspect if you're listening to this podcast, you do as well. And while I don't know precisely what that will look like for you, I don't know how you might be tempted to discredit yourself, to disqualify yourself, or who you might feel is trying to disqualify you. But might I suggest a couple things? First, that you remember who you are in Jesus Christ and who has assigned you to whatever role you currently hold. And then might I suggest that you start where today's verse ends, seeking soul deep purity, gained through prayerful self-examination, regularly practicing confession, and remaining deeply connected to Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Holy Father, thank you that because of your Son, our Savior, Jesus, we can live pure, fully loved, gentle, strong, confident, and loving lives. We have nothing to fear. We have nothing to prove. No one can disqualify us for something that you have qualified us for. You are going before us. You have a plan for us. You are crafting us and building us and molding us to walk in that plan, to walk in our calling. You know exactly where we are today. You know exactly what we're going to face tomorrow. You know the opposition we feel comes against us. You know those negative thoughts that run through our mind where we try to disqualify ourselves. Help us instead to speak truth to our souls, to soak in truth through scripture, to proclaim truth as we pray to you, to proclaim truth over our fears and our insecurities, and to proclaim that truth in the face of opposition. We are qualified because you alone have the power to qualify us. And so we will rise to whatever you place in front of us, and we will set an example in what we say, in what we do, in how we engage, in how we love and how we hold tight to you. And thank you that when we mess up, when we give in to defensiveness, when we allow our insecurities to overpower us, thank you that you provide ample grace and you meet us in those places and you help us get back on our feet and you nudge us forward to that very next step. We know that you will perfect everything that concerns us and we praise you for that. It is in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we pray. 
Amen. Your Daily Bible Verse is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com. Thank you.